guys, today's video is going to be a review of two different books. It's going to be Landline by Rainbow Rowell, which is upside down, and Covet by Tracy Garvis Graves. I wanted to do kind of like a back-to-back -back review because they're both books about marriages. So let's get started. Covet is the story of Chris and Claire Canton and they have been married for quite a while. They, I want to say they have two children, but maybe it's only one and I'm going crazy. Their marriage has hit a rough patch. Basically, Chris has been out of a job for a while and it's hitting him pretty hard because he has always been the predominant breadwinner of the family. So when he loses his job at first, he's really optimistic. And then as time goes on, it really starts to affect him psychologically and emotionally. And in turn, it starts to affect their relationship. And the story begins on the day that our main character, Claire, meets a cop one day as he stops her on the side of the road. And they have a very basic exchange. He lets her off and nothing really happens with them. He, you know, the, the story is told through alternating perspectives though. So you get the story from Claire's perspective, you get the story from Chris's perspective, and you also get the story from Daniel's perspective, which is the cop. To be honest with you, Daniel is probably the perspective that you get the least in the book, which is perfectly fine. I'm gonna get into some spoilers now, so I'll flash something on the screen that says spoilers, and then when I'm done, I'll flash something that says spoilers over, so you can put the volume back on if you want, but here we go. So the story is really the story of Chris and Claire's marriage as it is and what happens when somebody else comes into the picture who actually kind of brings something to the table that no longer exists in the current relationship that you're in. Chris was no longer there for her emotionally. She kind of latches onto the support and the really the attention that she gets from Daniel. So while nothing really happens physically in the story the entire relationship between Claire and Daniel is one giant case of emotional cheating and you find yourself really torn because while you want her marriage to survive and you really want to see her and Chris work everything out it's so hard to root for them when you see how great the connection is she has with Daniel. Overall, I really enjoyed this book. As I said, when I did my wrap up, it sparked a lot of conversation between my husband and me um, as I would read the book and I would like comment out loud about what was going on. I really was rooting, you know, for some sort of resolution for Claire because I feel like at the end of the day, it's really Claire's story and you just want her to be happy. You don't, as much as you like both guys, you don't really, that's not who you're invested in. You're invested in a good resolution for her. I wanna say I gave it four and a half to five stars. This is the second book I read from this author, Tracy Garvis Graves. Her first book was even more addicting than this one, if that's possible. Honestly, I would say pick up both of her books if you haven't read anything by her because you will inhale these two books. They're just so, so good. I feel like she's really good at writing complex character situations and then having like allowing you to go along as they deal with getting themselves out of the messes that they're in or figuring out what to do and i really enjoy reading that next we have rainbow rowell's landline and this is also a story about a marriage. I read this this month. This story is the story of Georgie McCool and Neil. And they meet in college and Neil's kind of a loner and Georgie is a little bit more outgoing and they meet at the school newspaper. And over the course of time, they fall in love, get married, have two beautiful daughters. You know, she is a successful career woman who works writing scripts for a comedy TV show and he has, after years of being an illustrator, decides to be a stay-at-home dad in order to raise their daughters because Georgie can't really give up her career. That in and of itself kind of creates this weird dynamic to their relationship which 
has sort of existed from the very beginning, but it becomes a blatant issue at that moment. And the story picks up years after they've had their daughter, and it's kind of like the current State of the Union is not really that great. There is, you know, they kind of just go through the motions of everyday life. Georgie works, Neil takes care of the girls, and things are just not that awesome. The shit hits the fan when they're supposed to go on a vacation and Georgie can't go. So when the story kicks off and you find out that Georgie is not going to be able to leave on the family trip for Christmas, you can really see Neil's disappointment and his how upset he is, but he doesn't want to let it show. Honestly, sometimes the not fighting shows how little you care about something. It's better to fight about it, as weird as that sounds, but there it is. So when Neil leaves and Georgie just thinks like, oh, that wasn't so bad, I felt like it was the beginning of the end of their relationship. And then lo and behold, Georgie finds the magic telephone. And when she finds the magic telephone and she's able to reconnect with the Neil of old, the Neil that she fell in love with, and she sees what a difference, how different their relationship was then to how it is now, she really realized how underappreciated Neil had become over the course of their marriage. The thing that bothered me, I guess, the most about this, I really loved Georgie's relationship with her best friend and how they had such a wonderful working relationship and how they were just friends. I love that they were just friends for, you know, pretty much the whole story. It never happened, it was never gonna happen. So it really bothered me in the last few chapters when he kind of tried to make more out of that because I feel like in certain cases, men and women can be friends and I really hate that the way that, it, that that's always depicted is that it's not possible. Overall, I really enjoyed the book. I love the character development. I love how you could really see Georgie slowly realizing through the conversations what she needed to do and how the time together had changed the, the dynamic in their relationship. I really, really enjoyed it. And I wanna say I gave this five stars, maybe four and a half stars because of the time traveling telephone. But other than that, it was really really great. Those are my reviews on the two very vastly different marriage books. Let me know if you've read Landline and what you thought about it and if you've read Covet and what you thought about it. That's it. See you next time. Bye!